Science is one of society's most trusted institutions, and that trust can be manipulated. People can use the appearance of science to push ideas that really have no serious scientific basis. Sometimes, all it takes is a white lab coat, fancy equipment, or a lot of complicated looking equations. But don't be fooled. You can buy lab coats and fancy equipment on eBay, and anyone can drop complex equations. Just because it's complicated doesn't mean it's right. Much of the information to which you are exposed presents itself as scientific. In this video, I describe four basic principles of science. Knowing these four principles can help you figure out whether or not a purportedly scientific piece of information is actually scientific or merely posing as scientific. Warning. Don't confuse the idea of scientific information with factually accurate information. A lot of scientific information is wrong. Instead, think of scientific information as something that's been produced by a particular method. This method is fallible. It can produce bad information. But just about any type of information producing process can create bad information, and science has a pretty good track record. How can you tell whether a piece of knowledge is scientific or non-scientific? Very little information is purely scientific or not. Perhaps it's better to say, how can you tell if a piece of information is more or less scientific? Well, one way to think about it is by its adherence to four basic principles. Skepticism, empiricism, objectivity, and control. The more a piece of information conforms to these principles, the safer we are in assuming that it's genuinely scientific. Skepticism means doubting the truth about something. The opposite of skepticism is faith, which involves assuming the truth about something. Now everyone is skeptical about beliefs with which they disagree. For example, many people are skeptical of the idea that vaccines are safe to use. They're skeptical about global warming. They're skeptical about the idea that humans descended from primates. Doubting ideas with which you disagree does not make your ideas or beliefs scientific. Information is scientific when it has implicit doubts about its own truth or uncertainty. In other words, scientific skepticism means that you have some level of doubt about your own beliefs and conclusions. You resist accepting your facts or your ideas as facts until their truth is hard to deny. Good scientific explanations make serious efforts to disprove themselves. Empiricism means basing your judgment of ideas using observable evidence, things that you can see, smell, hear, touch, or taste. Empiricists do not accept the, an idea just because it makes sense, logically, or because a lot of people believe it, or because people have believed it for a long time. Empiricists have to see or sense tangible evidence that something exists in the real world before they accept it as real. They have to see it to believe it. Scientists maintain a professional ethic to be objective. Objectivity means that someone is not influenced by personal emotions or prejudices when they're making judgments. Scientists strive to describe the real world as it is, not how they want it to be, not how they think it should be, but how it really is. Now, striving for something and actually doing it are two different things. No person can be completely objective. Everyone has biases, and everyone is manipulated by their emotions. Science can't really escape all bias, but at least it makes a good effort. Finally, science uses controls. Scientists generally use a common set of procedures to help ensure that they're doing their job properly. They put in procedures to make sure that they're not jumping to conclusions. They put in procedures to make sure that other people can double-check their work. They put in procedures in an attempt to minimize the degree to which they're being tricked into thinking that something's true when it really isn't. The basic idea is that good science follows several different procedures, and those procedures help ensure that information is of good quality. The main goal of this lesson is to help you assess the degree to which a piece of information is scientific. Consider these examples. Think about the degree to which they reflect science's principles of skepticism, empiricism, objectivity, and control. Example number one, religious faith. 
We all know that religion isn't scientific, but why? Why is the idea that the world was created in six days, or that there is a God, not scientific? Let's think about it. Number one, religion isn't skeptical. Religion rests on faith. Faith involves believing that something is true, even if it hasn't been proven. Faith is the opposite of skepticism. In addition, religion isn't empirical. We don't really have strong documentary evidence of God existing. No one has captured direct evidence of there being a God. Most of the stories in the Bible aren't corroborated by archaeological evidence. So, it doesn't rely on observable facts before believing that something exists. In that sense, it also isn't scientific. Be careful. Just because something isn't scientific doesn't mean that it's factually wrong. It is equally non-scientific to be a hard atheist. It takes an equal leap of faith to conclusively prove there is no God, even though we can't prove that God doesn't exist. It's not exactly skeptical either. Example number two, anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal evidence is evidence that comes from a particular event, person, or thing that we observe, observe firsthand. In everyday conversation, a lot of the evidence that we give to each other is of an anecdotal character. For example, your friend might have taken a trip to Philadelphia and noticed that there's a bunch of people who are eating cheesesteaks and decided that everybody in Philadelphia loves cheesesteaks. Or maybe you went to Brooklyn, you ran into some rude people, and you conclude that people from Bro Brooklyn are rude in general. These types of inferences aren't scientific, but why aren't they scientific? After all, the information is empirical, it was based on observable evidence, and it might have been skeptical too. You might not have assumed that Philadelphians like cheesesteaks, or that Brooklynites are rude before you met them. But your observation wasn't controlled. You may have only talked to five or so people. You may have only observed one cheesesteak uh, restaurant at one time. You didn't set up any procedures to ensure that you weren't making hasty generalizations. You didn't set up any procedures to ensure that your behavior wasn't creating the results. Maybe you were being a jerk to people in Brooklyn, and they were responding in kind. Maybe when you were talking to people in Philly, you were showing a lot of enthusiasm for cheesesteaks, and they responded to your enthusiasm. There weren't a set of procedures that you used to make sure that the information that you were getting was accurate. And in that sense, it wasn't very scientific. Another example comes from advertisements where we hear four out of five dentists favor Crest. That sounds scientific. It probably was based on a survey, so it was empirical. And the survey may have even been constructed properly, so it was sort of controlled. In all probability, there really, there really was a survey of dentists, and 80% of them did say they favored Crest or Colgate or whatever. But that survey was probably one of several surveys, and the advertisers picked the survey that happened to ask a random group that liked Crest. Why isn't it scientific? Well, the problem is, is that it didn't strive for objectivity. It wasn't concerned with finding the truth, so much as it was proving a particular point. The Crest research was probably geared towards finding an answer that favored Crest, so it wasn't objective. We put a lot of faith in science. That faith encourages people to impart the appearance of science when they're trying to convince you of something. But don't confuse the appearance of science, a PhD, a lab coat, expensive analysis equipment, for information that's being created by a scientific process. Information isn't either scientific or not. It has varying levels of scienticity or scientificness. When you're confronted with a piece of information that's being presented to you as scientific, Ask yourself if it has these four qualities. Likewise, if you want to think scientifically, be sure that you have these four attitudes. Skepticism. That's the idea that information isn't just accepted on faith. Empiricism. That's we, when we don't accept a claim until it's been substantiated by observable evidence. Objectivity. That's a genuine desire to describe the world as it really is, and not merely prove uh, that the world is the way we want it to be. And control. Those are procedures to ensure that our inquiry is unbiased, accurate. 
it isn't easy to judge the scientificness of ideas in practice, but at least try. Try to gauge whether that person in a lab coat with the PhD is pushing ideas that are based on skepticism, empiricism, objectivity, and control. If they aren't, then this person is merely imitating a scientist and not acting like one.